This is a podcast from the Queen City Podcast Network. Welcome to Nerd School. Nerd! 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 Yeah. Suck it, nerd! 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 Uh. Welcome to Nerd School. Oh yeah, recording now, so here we go again. We can hear Art Stars recorded farts and go Art oh, Stars. Oh no, fart symphony. <laughs> no, <laughs> and then you did it. So. <laughs> that's Honestly. that's fitting with this this uh, movie. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why people. There's a lot of like, turd humor, the- fart yeah. jokes. There this, is the the turd joke. I could not believe when I first heard it. <laughs> I could not believe I had just heard that conversation happen I'm gonna put in, a- in a Marvel movie in general. Yes. Right. I couldn't get over that for like the next twenty minutes of the movie when I first saw it. This. I have famously huge turds. <laughs> well, it's not even that he says that. He's just like, ha ha. Yep, that's right. Oh, that's See, great. U- up till that point, okay, it's they're they're you know bantering back and forth. They're insulting each other. Blah blah blah. Okay, I can see them. The rocket yeah. say, "I'm going to put a turd in your thing." Okay, but Drax laughing and saying, "I have famously huge turds." It's not my yep. turds. It's Drax's turds. I yes. could not. I could <laughs> not process that. Like, yeah, I, I didn't come out of it until like they had crash landed already, and he was laughing. I was like, "Oh my god, I can't believe I just heard that." Well, because and then he can't help but picture Drax poop. Drax pooping. Yeah. No, I can help that. I can. I can. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I can't. I, I, and, and I guess and are are they green? Listen, for, can we rewind? We haven't even <laughs> said, hey, listeners, this is <laughs> an episode on Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 2. Volume 2, colon. Taking a number two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, better than what I was going to say. All right. If you haven't guessed from the turd talk, um, <laughs> this is what this, this is an MCU yeah. turd talk. Yeah, the phase MCU three of the mcu we're still working our way through phase three Movie three in phase three this one came out in 2017 mm-hmm. 15th our, this is the 15th film in the mcu yes and i've done a lot of time. research there's a lot of new characters introduced in this uh uh film some of which are cameos but are very important to the actual history of the comic version of guardians of the galaxy so a lot of people are from the first one too that are back yeah written and directed by james gunn just like the first one is that right that is correct guess who's back, back although again. he might did he, i think he might did he write it with his brother i don't i don't know but i had from according to wikipedia it just it was written and directed by james gunn with an ensemble cast featuring chris pratt zoe saldana dave bautista vin diesel bradley cooper Michael Rooker, Karen Gillian, Palm Clementif. Palm then Clementif. Diesel gets a top. Sylvester Stallone. Yeah, I guess just because he's baby group, right? And Kurt yeah, Russell. Diesel. I know. It just seems odd to hear him in the like top line of the stars of right. the movie. Yeah. Well, I guess but, because groups and they they want they want you know to give Groot some billing. So like, okay, yeah. Groot is voiced by. When they think about it, like, is he voiced by him in this film as Baby Groot? Did they auto? Did they auto tune his voice? No, Vin Diesel set like recorded eight million versions of "I Am Groot," and And they they they, he specifically does it. Baby, it. (laughs) Yeah, and they just uh auto yeah auto tune his voice. And if you remember, uh, the Groot was kind of the. I, I mean, they were all kind of breakout characters from the first True. one, but Groot, like the way it ended, he was the big heroic sacrifice at the end. We are Groot. Have you guys, have you guys all seen uh, the holiday episode? Yes. No. All right. I thought well, we were saving well, them all. I, okay. Well, I well, have this, barely this is, been alive. This, this is not, this is not more of a holiday thing. This is just something that James Gunn mentioned the other day. Like you'll see it once you, like, I don't, I, I can't call it a spoiler. 
Because if you've seen the trailer, you saw Groot in it. So, like, Groot, once he sacrifices himself in the first one, like, this baby Groot is basically Groot Jr. It's not the same Groot. Like, this, just like, so, like, this. Oh, it's not the same guy? Not the same Groot. It's the same. It's the same. It's still Vin Diesel, but it's not the same Groot. That's why, you know, he, like, he does the whole. He doesn't have the memories of the old group. Oh, right. that's and then the like question. there's also, yeah. you know, like the one in the holiday special, he's supposed to be like sort of like jock group or whatever, but he's yeah. totally a different group than the one we see that sacrifices himself. Yeah, this is a, a like basically Groot's offspring. Right. But he serves see, the I don't same think of it as an offspring. I think of it as I do An think of it as different group. characters, but I'm let's go into plant science i think of it yeah. as if you are potting plants and you cut a piece off of one plant and repot it it grows into a whole well, in, in the in the comics it's not the same plant with the same the memory comics, no have, but it's like, from so i think about that as yeah. he is a tree like he's, he's a, a piece of, of the old tree it's death in the comics has all has been kind of based on it like you know it's a sprig it regrows. He can regrow. Yeah. He can regenerate. Kind of thing. Yeah. But like here, for some reason, and I don't. It could be the fact that he left, and he's now part of. I'm doing air quotes. The DCU, where he kind of just like saying, like, you know what? This is this is not Groot from the first movie. This is a whole new Groot. Like once he sacrificed himself, there's always been a whole new Groot. Well, now like, you mentioned that. See that. I mean, if we go deep into science, the science of plants. Mm-hmm. It would make sense that he wouldn't carry the memories because when you plant, my sister has a plant named Ursula. Shout out to Tempest. I can't keep Ursula. a plant alive, but she can keep a plant alive. And she had to, what do they call it when you take a section? Of, it's not spawning. Like what pruning? Do you call that? Is the pruning like? No, no. no pruning like you want to clean make it, it up. Okay. Pruning's when you clean it up. What's the term when you take a piece of it to replant? I don't know damn planting terms. Regenerate. Listen, you tell <laughs> no, it's me. Not regeneration. Itself. But I never, I've never. i always thought of it without hearing the backstory. It's just a piece of the old plant anew mm-hmm. each time. It's a new growth. That's so how I've, I've always I've a, imagined. I have a James Gunn question that Art briefly mentioned something about him being part of the DCU now. Yeah. Is he still both is he still the guardians of the galaxy guy supposedly volume five? three is his last is, is his last whatever with the mc uh, marvel i think yeah. he stepped over to dcu now and he's and got is it like a contract he's so he signed like a contract that he he's like he's, he's like, like overseeing all yeah, he's the, like half a feige over so there. he's the feige yeah. of the dcu no, he's yeah, a half yeah. a feige over there it's him and another guy. But yeah, it's him and another guy. But I mean, do you think he signed something that says he's not allowed to be part oh, of MCU a non compete? You're the... gonna always yeah, not compete. Oh, yeah, yeah. I am almost sure if you're actively building, you're gonna have a non compete. We have a non compete in our contract, y'all. Unless somebody um, buys a uh unless Warner Brothers gets bought by Disney, and then it won't matter. Yeah, we'll That's see. They're doing true. a fire sale. They're just, Everything uh, must go. Who is Warner Brothers? Is yeah, they're they're like stripping things off of their like they're destroying HBO Max and turning it into some oh other gosh. kind of streamer. They're like yes. take they're just like canceling <laughs> shows out of nowhere. They're tearing it stuff down. Yeah. They're they're removing stuff from streaming services so you can't see them so they can write them off on their taxes. They're doing some weird. It's weird because they then because what they were choosing to put on HBO versus what they were choosing like it was almost slightly gendered and. And very like it was odd choices. There was like a bit of everything uh, remotely woke. Yeah, being pulled off. Really? Yeah, it was a little controversial. Was it, was it like bought by some sort of crazy? They brought in some new guy uh, to be an accountant or something because they were kind of in a mess. And then he's just you know tearing it all. But the down. way he's dividing it is not in a way that's healthy or really sustainable. It is making people question their sanity. Wow. Yeah, and everyone's like, what the hell? I I I'm trying to work on this project. This is mm-hmm. I think there's lawsuits for breach of contract because now like stuff that you know people were getting royalties on is now just not being shown anywhere and they just like <clears throat> it's it's a whole Awful. Yeah, it's a whole kerfuffle. Yeah, for Warner Brothers right now, but they got James Gunn doing DC, so 
Well, and speaking he, of James yeah. Gunn, yeah. for this film, they said he chose to set the sequel, this number two, <laughs> uh, shortly <laughs> after, the, after the first film to explore the character's new roles as the Guardians, now that they've become the Guardians, and mm-hmm. to follow the storyline of Quill's father established throughout the previous film. Uh, yeah, and so that's his father played by Kurt Russell. Kurt! Do we like that choice? I yeah. think you can go wrong with Kurt Russell go. in a movie. The, uh, yeah, uh, this is a sort of a combination of the comic version of Star-Lord's father, which is not Ego, and the different character in comics, which is Ego the Living Planet. So, uh, oh, it's, so it's an amalgamation of a couple of different things. Yeah, uh, Ego uh, the Living Planet, uh, originally created in 1966 by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. It first appeared in Thor number 132. Um, this is right after, you know, they invented Galactus and all this this space mythology and stuff. And, uh, so it was Jack Kirby going batshit with the cosmos, like, cause he, that's what he excelled at thinking up crazy ass spaceship and, uh, a giant planet with a face. It, It wasn't just like a guy. It was a planet with a face on it. Ego, the living planet. And he was just, that's what he was. But in comics, Star Lord's father was just this dude named Jason from another planet, the planet uh, Spartax, who uh, <laughs> first appeared. Uh, it's you know Star Lord Marvel preview number one, I believe, or eleven in 1977 it was the first appearance of Star Lord, and he was way more like a traveling spaceman, uh, explorer kind of guy, as opposed to you know uh, a mercenary <laughs> ravager type. So Jason of the planet Spartax, that's the origin of, you know, he came to Earth, he crash landed on Earth briefly and then had an, a fling, had a kid, went back off to the stars. And then he was like the, uh, turned out he was a jerkwad evil emperor of Spartax that Star-Lord eventually had to go expose as a cheap murderer then got him deposed from power. And then he became, uh, rather than, since he didn't have any power anymore, he became Mr. Knife. <laughs> and started a space crime syndicate and something called the slaughter squad i just read about uh, who doesn't uh, need that yeah that was more in uh uh 2013 brian michael bendis guardians of the galaxy which you know <sighs> that that's a long story but brian michael bendis writing something is not generally something i want to read you don't like his spider-man his Spider-Man run? His, his ultimate with Spider-Man X-Men was runs? when he's doing his own thing and he doesn't have to worry about, uh, you know, anything that went before ever. Uh, he's all right. I really liked his ultimate Spider-Man. But uh, when he takes over a book that I'm enjoying, I tend to stop enjoying it. <laughs> So he's your writer equivalent to. No, your- I, I, I knew that. I knew you were going to go Liefeld on that. I wouldn't say that. Liefeld, so he's not Liefeld, but he's... There, there is nothing I have liked that Liefeld has done. Okay. Bendis, I recognize what he does. I recognize his talents, and they're just not always for me. Okay, it's just not Liefeld your taste. Is, you is, don't hate him. Yeah, Liefeld is trash, objectively. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> to steal a TBJ adjective. Uh, yeah. I feel like so many more people are using that now. It's all from TBJ. Trash, it's a thing. I mean, yeah, yeah as people say it. People or are trash. garbage human. Trash panda. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that brings yes. us back to the Guardians. Uh, so you mentioned at one point in that whole big, long, boring diatribe you just said, Andy, uh, that. <laughs> oh, <No>, Joe. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, that at. The ego at one point was a planet with a face, and I think that's an om- they have an homage to it. Yeah, towards the he end basically, of this film where they make his yeah. face look like his, Kurt Russell's, and it looks ridiculous. He looks like Globy from uh, uh, <laughs> as I was movies. watching this again, Joe. <laughs> yeah. I thought about you and the Joe verse, yeah, because in the Joe verse, ego would be John Walker's son. I mean, no, John Walker John would Walker's be ego's father. son, yeah, right, yeah. And he's also, uh, isn't he Tango no. from Tango and Cash? Or is he Cash? I think he's Cash. He's cash. Is he he's Cash. cash. Still Sloan is Tango. Tango. 
And uh, he, he's also <laughs> Snake Fliskin from Escape from New York. And he's also the, the, the what is it, the computer who wore tennis shoes from the old Disney movies. There's know. really old Disney movies where they were just live action silly shit from the 70s. Kurt Russell was in them? Yeah, I there's a young Kurt time. Russell. Listen, well, I'm going to put that in my pocket for Kurt Russell trivia because uh, that may come up one point. In my I mind. think that's the name of it. The computer who wore it. It was just a kid who was really smart. I think. And isn't he Goldie Hans? Is he still Goldie Hans' lover? Sexual partner. Lover? <laughs> <laughs> partner, yes. They're still very much partners. Boingy bangers, later. bangy boyers. I don't know Boingy if that's banger. what they would define it as. <laughs> Humpers. Uh, I feel like at this age, you're probably more than humpers. Wiener crankers. Uh, no, we're not going to use that term. Okay, they've been go- together. I want to say like thirty years. It's a long time. They never got married, right? It's common law now. Yeah. Right? I mean, their kids. Um. Yeah, like her kids Hudson, saw him. Hudson, Hudson what's uh, Marissa Hudson or uh, Kate, Kate, Kate? Kate Hudson. Hudson. Mm-hmm. Marissa, I don't know why I call And him. um, the son is what's his name? Wyatt Oliver Russell. Hudson? Oh. No, Oliver, Oliver is also Hudson. Wyatt Russell is his. She has, she's more than two, but two. That he's are the one who plays Captain America, actors. right? No, who? Oh, USA. you mean the jackass Captain America? Yeah. Yes. When you said Captain, I was like, no, that's yeah. Chris. <laughs> the crappy new new one. That's yeah. Chris. The one with the punchable mean, face. Yes. That one. That is what. That is well, the he plays one. U.S. agent. U.S. agent. Yeah, you guys might not know this, but Guardians of the Galaxy number two premiered in Tokyo on April tenth, twenty seventeen, before it was released in the United States. So, but yeah, I know nothing about Tokyo. Shit tends to happen there. It grossed more than eight hundred sixty-three million dollars worldwide. They get the eighth, eighth highest grossing film of twenty seventeen. Also, side note: After doing a quick uh, search, they yeah. got together in 1983. So next oh, year should be 40 years. Oh my gosh! Now they're going to break up and start seeing other people. I at 40 years in, I think, I think they're pretty solid. They're pretty stuck together. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah. Well, Tony years. Collette just got separated from her husband after because he was years, cheating. So. He was oh. in these streets <laughs> cheating. You yeah. were talking about trash. They could have stayed together. I, if he kept I didn't know anything. I just, I just know I saw it. I was just watching Knives Out, and then I seen a uh, because he was think about it on the films with his lips on someone that was not his wife, dummy. Hey, oh, oh. <laughs> is that like those <laughs> good, good Morning America actors there or er, hosts? Oh my they, god, they got suspended for banging each other. They well, because they were both married to other people. They were both married to other people, and this is neither one of theirs first affair. And normally, people don't get in their business, but it was it was uh, making ABC look a little bad, so they've been replaced. No also, longer. dummies, there are cameras everywhere. At this point, if you do not like the person you have married, you should probably divorce them. Mm-hmm. Right, you're going to end up giving them more money if you're caught on camera cheating. So that's okay. dumb of you. That's right. So how about you just not? Also, be if you are down with open relationship, date someone who is also down with open relationships or marry someone yes. who is down with open relationship. It is dumb of you to date a monogamous or marry a monogamous person if you can't remain monogamous. That's dumb. You're going to end up in messy messiness. Yep, like Let's Preach stop. said. Wow. If you're down with OPP. I know. I'm going to get off me. my soapbox. Well, it's so weird because there's enough people, there's enough humans in this universe that you Man. can partner with someone who also would like to be non-monogamous like you can do that in 2022 you do not have to remain married if you and your partner are not on the same page and that's how tvj explains it i think it's it's by freeman there's too many cameras i don't know if y'all are on the messy side of tiktok but i am and i'm like man y'all are dumb to hear all these (laughs) cheating stories i'm like I'm not on that side of TikTok. No, oh, I, see, I see some TikTok. weird shit on TikTok, but it's nothing like I that. don't even want to know what side of TikTok you're on. <laughs> I, I am on messy TikTok where it's like it's like literal catching. Like people are catching their partners. I barely understand TikTok. <laughs> are you showing your age? So part? like are, are do you think they're staging those videos just for No, some of them are like not staged. Some of them are not on purpose like catching. Some of them are um, some of them have suspicions and go check it out, and some of them like I just, came home early, or I looked uh, at my um, cam, you know, your ring camera, 
-hmm. And the same person keeps coming to my house at the same time every goddamn day, which is also dumb. You have a ring camera, homie. Like, (laughs) yeah. I did, get, I did get caught up on TikTok with Couch Guy and Long Distance Girl. Did you see oh, that yeah. One? I got really hooked on that. I kept asking my daughters, like, is this real? Do you think, who do you think? Is Couch Guy have this other girl's phone? And it's this girl who's coming from a long distance. Yeah. Like she's going to see her boyfriend at college. And they she goes to surprise him. And they see her open the door. And he's got he's like sitting on a couch with three girls. And well, he's like hanging out with his friends, which is not suspicious. Like, yeah. you know, I have a kid in college. There are girls in his dorm room all the time. He is not seeing them. But it was at the added weirdness was the way one of the girls reacted to. And yeah. the way he just sat on the couch and didn't even get up to be like, oh, my girlfriend. Yeah. Like. He, he, he it like, was it looked like like someone was passing a phone yeah it was behind the back but she yeah. then went on tiktok like no this is my boyfriend and he's great uh everything's great guys you read into a few minutes and listen you can take things out of context for a few seconds yeah but yeah. i would hope if i travel a long distance to see my partner there is a sense of oh my god you're here um, and then what and- about the other? What about the girl who's breaking up? This was my favorite TikTok that went viral. She's breaking up with her boyfriend, and she's like, "You manipulator! I hope you choke on concrete!" And she's like screaming, and her, her friends are just laughing while she's screaming. I have not her. seen that one. All right, that's my favorite one. I can't stop watching that one. There's a million versions of that. Anyway, let's get back to Guardians Sorry, of the Galaxy. Back to Guardians of the Galaxy, where TikTok does not exist, but probably should because there's some messy dynamics in this damn movie, which should be on messy TikTok. Well, and and, everybody's uh, excited because the third one's coming out in May, and the holiday special just came out, which was great, and I've seen that. And and we'll talk about that after we finish this movie. We will. And I rewatched I, before we watch this. I rewatched, so I watched this once. Then I went and rewatched the first one. Then I watched the holiday special, and then I just watched this one again. Uh, and I think the Guardians of the Galaxy are my favorite. Yeah, uh, it's so a lot weird because it's not my favorite. They are. I mean, it's. I mean, I'm their why. target audience, I think. You probably are. Like, when I turned <laughs> yeah, I on to her. watch it, I was watching with, well, you know, I have older humans, and they were walking, and they both stopped to take in what I was doing and stood there for a while. And I was, like, begrudgingly <laughs> re-watching it. I was like, uh-huh. and it's not bad. It's done fine. It's, mm. But I am not, this woman is not. <laughs> Other than Baby Groot and Gamora, yeah, yeah. Um, and I think I said that movie one. Other, other than Gamora, then and Baby Groot at the end, it's not my cup of tea. Just a lot of I wiener did. and poop jokes. Which I, is, I, is I but I'm not opposed to that. I've literally watched the 40 year old <laughs> version probably 60 times. Like I watched, <laughs> really? I, yeah, I watched the hell out of that movie. I love Steve Carell. Like That's I fine. watched that movie so many times, it's unnatural. You would think that I Kelly was a <laughs> frat boy, but I don't know something about Guardians. Anyway, let's go back. Let's go. Okay, back. yeah. So uh, the plot is. Uh, uh, let's see, Drac- it's, well, I guess it just starts off with uh, the whole team uh, fighting this big giant monster. Uh, and it's a little cute little opening sequence where Groot's turning on the music. Uh, um, yeah, Aisha, the leader of the sovereign race, has hired them to protect valuable batteries from obelisk and interdimensional. Can we talk about monsters. how weird that race is? It was weird gold sovereign. sovereign. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, interestingly, uh, I didn't realize it, but those were made up for this movie. Those aren't even Marvel uh, characters. Oh, they're not. Huh. Yeah. But is, so is are didn't they make, they're making Adam Warlock be a, yeah, but guys, right? uh, that's the sovereign. were not who made Adam Warlock in the comics. Uh, oh. this, it's this weird group of researchers called the enclave who were trying to create the pinnacle of human evolution. So, that's kind of what they're kind going of, for here. Kind of the same. It's the same concept, but it's not, wasn't these guys. It wasn't these weird gold people. Wow. Okay. So I totally assume this was just something from comics. Uh, yeah. And Drax is not wearing an arrow rig, which is like the little magic backpack thing <laughs> due to his nipples. Uh, being <laughs> Got it. Can't stand that nipple chasing. <laughs> the, the, the thing with the Anulax batteries Harbulary batteries, yeah, yeah, and then he insists later that's why this is my wheelhouse, I guess. This it's so 
the the level of silly that they can get away with in these is, is a lot of fun. I didn't and, even say uh, anything close to that. Yeah. And then he's, he's correcting him later. They're harbulary batteries. Though. <laughs> no, they're not. They're harbulary batteries. And it's, yeah, it's, it's so dumb, but it's great. And like, I, I'm really into the Guardians of the Galaxy movie just because I was a big fan of the, the comics that they're based on. And one of the things I'm excited about is volume three. They're actually going to start wearing the uniforms that they had in those comics that I was a fan of before this movie even came out uh, before so they're these, not for they the mcu even wearing, came out they haven't been wearing them uh, rocket before. uh in like end game avengers end game rocket's wearing his version of this uniform oh, okay. which is which is odd i thought oh that's a nice nod to the things but i didn't realize guardians 3 they're, they're going all in on the uniforms and that's just a nice little nerd touch for me that i very much enjoy yeah, and I, I, I did download the first Guardians of the Galaxy, I think, comic. I haven't read it yet. I started reading it. Well, but. it depends on... There's The first Guardians of the Galaxy was none of these characters except Yondu, and not in this form. The If you're talking about the original Guardians of the Galaxy oh, from I, 1969... No, I don't think... I don't think that, that's what I did. That's a... Uh, uh, I think Arnold Drake and Gene Colan created these Guardians of the Galaxy. It's like a in the 30th century, but some of those characters are in this movie. Like Yondu uh, was originally uh, just sort of uh, a Native American stereotype from another planet, though. He was a, he was a blue guy. He wasn't Cree, but he had the big fin. And he you know used a bow and arrow, and but of uh, course we had the stereotype in 1960 something. Yeah, it's 1969, so you'll you'll have that. And then um, uh, a couple of the dudes that show up at the end with uh, Stallone's crew uh, are in this too. They're, they're nods to the actual original Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, and that and that really made me feel like there's gonna be a like a show or a movie with those guys in it. Like it really felt like it, was it should that. be. Like they might, you know, this might be the 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 end of the trilogy of this version of the Guardians of the Galaxy, and then you know Stallone will have a team of the original guys maybe stallone and ving rames and uh well Michael yeah Rosenbaum. well ving rames, well, that'll be interesting yeah. is that character charlie whatever charlie, charlie 27 yeah who is a weirdly shaped uh soldier from jupiter <laughs> like he, okay, so he's compressed really and weird <laughs> well I, I haven't read a lot of, i did a lot of research before this and i yeah. remember doing the research on this uh for the the last film i was but, looking uh, these up too today i was like googling just because i was like Who's that? Who's that guy with the you know the ice face guy? The, yeah, that's he's Martin X. And that's I, yeah, that's what I found. He's, he's got a name, and he's an actual guy from other and, comics. And, and there's a couple other ones in that group. Like there's that little robot mask voiced by Miley Cyrus, who is like, <laughs> I missed you guys so much. That's Miley Cyrus. Is that really Miley Cyrus? That's Miley Cyrus, uh, and that's mainframe. Man, I have no idea. And in in comics, all mainframe is like the 30th century version of the Vision, who has become the chief operating system of the entire Earth. Really? Yeah. Uh, so. And so I don't know what he's doing in there. And then there's that big red dragon dude who is actually from uh, 1991, a guy named Krugar, who it was actually a freaking sorcerer supreme from that mm-hmm. alternate future. Yeah, most of these are from you see these in the post credit scene towards the end after the funeral yeah. type of thing. So we'll get we'll kind of get to that. But we kind of jumped ahead. But that I was just excited about the Ravagers. Like I love the Ravagers now. The whole Ravager code. Now they came back at the end and make mm-hmm. it uh, you know i don't know i just find myself like god i love this movie i want to keep watching it part of it is i just figured out how to get i moved a speaker that i have to my sound bar that my father <laughs> gave me last year to create kind of a so- surround sound in my mm-hmm. uh, living room and so i was like what it's a remote speaker why do i have it sitting right next to the sound bar oh i'm not a dumbass so I moved it across the rooms. Now it's behind, and then it's like, oh my god! It's like I'm like in a you're living in you're living in luxury there. Joe. And then I also here. realized yeah, I didn't have wow. it turned up all the way. I didn't have the subwoofer turned up, so I turned it up all the way. My house is like shaking with explosions now, and, <laughs> and all the neighbors are upset. My kids. I'm sure your wife loves it. Trying somewhere. to sleep, and they're all mad at me. But I love Guardians of the Galaxy, so <laughs> it doesn't matter what they think. Guardians space movies with blow up stuff. Yeah, so. Anyway, Aisha is the leader of the sovereign race that Andy said isn't from the comics. And yeah. she's having them protect these batteries. The big giant monsters uh, named Ab- Abelisk 
and he's interdimensional and he's shooting a rainbow barf in exchange for Gamora's estranged sister Nebula who was caught attempting to steal the batteries. This whole big scene is so funny. Uh, just opening scene is just what a great way to kick it off with the music and then baby group being the focus and everybody just keeps like falling and almost hitting him or like interacting with him. Like, Crew, get out of the way. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> you know, like uh, He's waving at her and she's like, hot, you know, whatever. But, you, you know, it's just like the way they're all interacting is just like they each have their little moment with Groot and we're seeing what they're doing and then uh, they're battling together and then the, just the whole thing with Drax going inside to, to destroy it from the inside. And like, that doesn't make any sense. I know I tried <laughs> to tell them that. And then the sword thing. I thought you were swords and I'm guns. Yeah. You know, just, yeah. Yeah, it's just what a great way to start it. And I think it's a good way to uh, lay the foundation for teamwork from jump. Yeah. Like a good reminder. Hey, remember, this is a team. Ooh, this is, uh, a good reminder to the audience to jump straight into teamwork. Yeah, and they did really work well together when she decided that, you know, he's got a cut on his neck, blah, blah, blah. And get yeah. him up and then she slices him and he falls out and he starts laughing, <laughs> laughing about it. Uh, and he says, I single-handedly did it, and Groot throws the thing at his head. Uh, <laughs> and, then, and then when they're thanking them, they're exchanging Nebula. Rocket has a little funny bit, calling them douchebags uh, and, and winking wrong. <laughs> yeah, like, did, I wink? did I wink with the wrong? Yeah. I again. <laughs> uh, that's, that's the kind of the tone James Gunn is pretty good at. It's just the real goof. Mm-hmm. Just yeah, making it really good sense of humor, fun. Yeah. Without yeah. making it well, <laughs> without making it too stupid. I mean, there are moments that or, are yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it, it's right on that line. There are some it's, moments. It's not that are... so obnoxious that you're just like, Ugh. yeah. Which is you know, well, I I, I would be afraid of a Guardians of the Galaxy without James Gunn. I would, I'd be worried it's not going to be have the same. I mean, he did set a good tone. And so yeah. if you're going to try to stick in that tone, you could, but I like the guardians three trailer makes it look like they're really going to go. All right. We had a lot of fun. This well, one's going to hurt you right in three is it. Is it. It's, it's, there won't be any more. It's way. for James guns. Yeah. But uh, you know, they might do some kind of offshoot or like, you a never know what version. ends up later. You, mm. you don't know their plans until they announce them. Nobody That's knows what the future holds. It's it's now an intellectually an intellectual property with some name recognition. So yep. I think they'll show up. I don't think they'll ever. I don't think they'll be in that the movie. Like they'll they'll yeah. the get the guardians of the galaxy will probably show up in Avengers five or some shit. There'll be that. one where that's called the New Guardians or something like that. Yeah, and it'll be a I different can see team that. with like maybe Groot still on it or. Groot uh, never goes away. Yeah, Groot can. Groot is eternal. I just, just like the KLF. I just love they have a, they have Rocket call them douchebags. Like just like douchebags calling people douchebags is in a Marvel movie. It's just <laughs> like, yeah. like that. It just always keeps like as soon as I forget that it's this. I'm in this. I'm taken away by explosions and action in a Marvel movie, and then something like the turds and the douchebags comes <laughs> yeah. back, and it's like, oh my god, this is funny. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But then we see Rocket steals the batteries uh, as they're walking out, and only Drax seems to know, and mm-hmm. he laughs about it. Mostly, Rocket is being a huge dick, uh, and he's leaning into being a huge dick because he's, you know, you know, Yondu leaning is hardcore. Mm-hmm. As we find out later, yeah, it's part of that defense rough mechanism. exterior defense mechanism keep everybody away just be an asshole to everybody it's like yeah um yeah which is great you know who what other movie is going to give a talking raccoon a character arc like that that's not a pixar movie yeah sure pixar would do it right You're yeah right. that's true and i feel like the animation and the cgi whatever is great like he looks oh 100 oh crazy. yeah he looks so real the way he moves and everything uh, then we get uh, Drax telling Quill to stop going after Gamora. She doesn't dance. She, <laughs> you're a dancer. She's not a dancer. And and then it tells the story of his wife, <laughs> who everybody thought was dead because she wouldn't dance. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and, and engorged his nether regions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's gross. I don't know about your nether region. <laughs> Uh, Gamora won't give Nebula the Yarrow root because it's not ripe yet, and that's an ongoing theme throughout the movie. It's this 
not ripe yarrow root. <laughs> How funny is that? Like, it's okay. just uh, yeah, it's it's like a, just a level. Here's a through line. We're gonna make a joke about this. Yeah, we're gonna bring that joke back. As soon as she takes a bite, but of it, we're gonna barely right. call any t- attention to it, and yeah. then this is the. No, payoff. we're just gonna have it there. We're gonna yeah. let you pull it out. Yeah, and then she finally gets it, and everyone was ripe, and she learns a lesson. <laughs> I love the first time she won't give it to her because it's not ripe yet, and I hate you. <laughs> yeah. Sister is a true definition of sister. That's right. Not so, my sister, but others. not your sister. Yeah, most sisters. Most. And because Rocket stole the batteries, the Sovereign attacks the Guardian ship with a fleet of drones that come flying in, uh, and they're trying to get away. So they go to Bearheart, which is one jump away, but the access point is forty-seven clicks away. Did you um, did you remember that as an interesting point? I wrote it down. So <laughs> what's the hell's a click and what the hell's an access point? And why can't we just use hyperspace like Star clicks Wars? are probably the click of the click, click of the clock or however clicks are, isn't that a military term? Yeah, probably. It's an actual measurement. I don't know the exact measurement, but it's it's an actual measurement. How long is a click? Make sure One kilometer. Right. Yeah, yeah. What, oh, that what makes the hell sense. is an access point? Uh, well, that's uh, how you get to one planet to another. I think it's well, like yeah. you get to a jump point. Those little like yeah honeycomb. It's it's like you got to fly to a place in order to teleport to yeah. another place. You can't just familiar? teleport teleport from anywhere. You have to be at a certain it's like point. a wormhole type of thing. Uh, Joe, uh, are you familiar or, with the game Star Reporter? You yeah. know how you have to go to an airport in order to fly to a different uh, location on the board. That's also in the world. Yeah, that's I well, it's that. the same <laughs> thing in space. You got to get to yeah. one place to get to the next place. Yeah, you can't get an airplane from your house. You have to get it from the airport. Well, Unless she had to go rich. to a quantum asteroid field first. Uh, yeah, that felt kind of like Star Wars. Like, yeah, uh, I'm sure that was an homage to that. An homage. I'm not flying into that asteroid field. Uh, and so this is where I was going to ask Andy, are the sovereign in the comics and, mm. and Adam Warlock thing, which you already answered. So mm. we find out in the post credit scene that they're making Adam War where you assume Adam Warlock, right? I think I'll call him Adam. Yeah. It's and I we see him somewhere. a bit in the Guardians trailer, the Guardians three trailer. You get a shot of him. So and he was Adam Warlock was in the uh, the run of Guardians of the Galaxy that inspired these movies. So he's a well-known comic book character. Like oh yeah, like he's he was very involved in like the Infinity Gauntlet. He was usually has something to do with Thanos. Like he was like an enemy of Thanos, and like they would. Uh, and what's his power? He's like a just a he's like a god type of thing. Kind of yeah. Um, it's kind of nebulous, but he's supposed to be you know. He was like the keeper of Infinity Stones. He's supposed to be the pinnacle of of evolution of the uh, humanoid potential. Except- oh, like Art Star. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, on my phone, I'm, I'm I got a big ego sometimes. He's got he, he's sometimes. My, I just on my phone. I can, you know I, I have like a little widget, right? And this widget, you know what it says? I am inevitable. <laughs> like it's it's literally like my motivation. Like I look at my phone. And it always says that. There you go. I'm not surprised by anything you just said. <laughs> like, I envision if we were to do, like, uh, MTV, Here's My Cribs, we'd walk into Art Star's crib, and it's big portraits of himself. I'm not and that. then and see that, and that's all the, I'm over not, the room that's the about thing. how bad I'm not, he is. I'm not that person. I'm not that person. My I thing is, know. like, I, I feel like I exude greatness, right? So for me, it's not. And that would be like, one of the posters on your wall. It's, I exude great. It's not about me having to like be one of those people who has uh. like pictures on top of pictures on top of pictures on top of pictures of themselves. Because I'm like, I'm fucking me. See, well, and Andy's place has big pictures of art, tasteful art star nudes all over. No, there. that's your place. Oh yeah, that's my place. <laughs> that's your place. <laughs> that, that's pictures. that's the back of your glasses. You just put yeah. them on. Yeah, <laughs> that's well, they're tasteful. Your place. They're tasteful nudes. Uh, but Adam Warlock's thing is that uh, he's supposed to be, you know, the pinnacle of evolution or whatever. But he also has this thing called cosmic awareness, where he's just he's plugged into the cosmos and he understands everything. But he also has like an evil alter ego named the Magus or the Magus or Magus. Not sure how to pronounce that. 
but like his face turns purple and he's like an evil version of himself. So how do you spell oh, no. it? Was it M A M A G U S? Yeah, go figure. I don't know why I, I would. Uh, okay, so that's... Yeah. What were you going to say, Art? Oh, Magus. I was just saying Magus. 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 Oh, Magus. Oh, Talking about Magus. 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 <laughs> uh, we're about to... He and Magus are a real death three. All right, sorry. <laughs> uh, we're about to the part where Rocket and Quill get into the pissing match about piloting uh, mm-hmm. through the asteroid field and... Rocket warns Quill, put a turd in his sleeping bag, and it'll be Drax's. And I said, this is why the movie is for me. And so <laughs> I have famously huge turds. Uh, turds and penis. Yeah. That's my penis question. I mean, yeah, yeah. We've, we've, we've covered that already. Yeah, we did. <laughs> uh, and then a mysterious figure comes and destroys all the drones and the Guardians crash land on a nearby planet. And by the way, Gamora is a badass holding yeah. on to Drax when he's always uh, has fallen out the Oh, he's still out there. What the hell? And he's about to f- be gone. She grabs the metal thing holding him, his whole body, and then she holds on to the the crashing spaceship and single handedly just holds all of it together with her badassness. Uh, mm. and that's awesome. Uh yep. she's a queen. <laughs> yeah, right. she's really just tough. And then the trash panda bit. Uh, which you know you can go eh, the trash panda was kind of a, a meme star lord wouldn't know it because he left in the 80s but, but you know well there's a minor a, league baseball team called the trash pandas yep I, i'm sure there wasn't in 1985 i don't know how long they've been or around. 1987 or whenever the hell star lord was abducted i mean people have been trash pandas for a while so the title might have been around for a while i still feel like i've never heard the term until i saw it in a meme so, so you think the the meme invented it? Yeah, rocket. I don't know because there was like it was the picture of all the the animals with silly names for them. Like the bear was the danger floof, the raccoon trash panda, blah blah blah. It was all it was a bunch of silly. It was funny, but uh, I feel like Starler wouldn't know that. But that's only something a dumb Killjoy nerd would say. So but we can go on from that. <laughs> So you, that's why you call yourself out. Yeah, yeah. So you don't think the rock? I'm City sometimes trash aware of when I'm overly nitpicking. What? You don't think the Rocket City trash pan has existed in the 80s? I don't know. I'm looking it up, and they say that the term trash panda is what's been used to describe raccoons for a while. We've taken it and turned it into, um, you know, low class girlies is what it started out like. I'm a trash panda. Um. And that became a thing, but well, they went, yeah, they came out around the same time, twenty twenty, yeah, as the. Uh, but apparently, we've been calling out, raccoons trash pan. I mean, they are like they actually changed their name to the Rocket City Trash Pandas after they relocated from. Uh, yeah, they was the mobile mobile Bay Bears. I'm yeah, so they glad coming, they went trash pandas. They've been coming Rocket City Trash until. 2020 they're a minor league team for the um, angels yeah but this has been out on the lands of urban dictionary since 2015 so it's I, around. I, I, which I'm is seeing, a far uh, bit later than 1987 redditor yeah. redditor carl Poligra but that's the pop term 2014 the, yeah so some guy on reddit apparently. yeah first said I don't anyway think when people say i made a term that's like bill gates internet like um, did you make the thing or you you just remember you being the first one in your friend group to make the thing? Well, I just <laughs> love that he's like, okay, you're a trash panda. Is that better? <laughs> trash like, yeah. I, I have worse. no idea. Way worse. Way worse. Way worse. That's like the way he said it, like it's like it's it was very douchebaggery, like, right? Yeah. Like it's yeah. way worse. I, I also feel like Rocket would know that it has the word trash in it, so it has to be worse. But well, I just yeah. love that Drax has no idea. You know, I don't know yeah. Drax uh, really has a clue. Then we find out that about Quill, a lot of things. The per- the guy was Quill's father, Ego, and then we cut to Contraxia, uh, a planet that apparently has a bunch of strip clubs, and everybody's tasting the snow. And Howard the Duck's there, uh, just scum and villainy. And then Judge Dredd tells Yondu that he's ex- <laughs> exiled. <laughs> And Joe Mercy's just <laughs> Judge Dredd. He's yeah. just a, 
Uh, I guess I could have picked. I almost picked Rocky and then Rambo, <laughs> but uh, he tells him he's exiled because of child trafficking. And in a foreshadow- uh, is, yeah. foreshadowing statement, he tells him he'll never have the colors of Ogord and will never flash or he'll never have the colors of Ogord flashing over his grave and he'll never hear the horns of freedom at his funeral. Uh, yeah, this is a Stakar in the comics. His name is Stakar Ogord, um, also known as Starhawk. Uh, this is pretty much nothing like the comic character. Uh, Stakar Ogord is uh, Starhawk in the comics is from the future. Some weird. Uh, uh, he's a child of the space superhero Quasar and uh, Kismet, who is basically a female version of Adam Warlock. And he uh-huh. uh, started researching this hawk god and kind of became its avatar thing. He's 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 like a weird future hawk band kind of guy. So nothing and at all like this. No, he's not just some just so dude Stallone round. in a suit. Yeah. However, Stallone's little shoulder things, his little gold shoulder things on his thing, are kind of like a nod to Starhawk's weird ass cape ish sort of thing in the comics. Okay. Uh, and the weird thing with Starhawk is that he was married. He got married and had kids with his adoptive sister, uh, Alita, who is played yeah. by Michelle Yeoh at the end of this. I don't. I'm pretty sure they're not going to be adopted siblings and i don't even know if they're they grew up together or not i don't know a lot about that once your mom marries my dad homie we can't talk (laughs) (laughs) but there but there was a weird bit where somehow they got physically merged and only one of them could exist in reality at any given time and the other one was just suspended in limbo some kind of consciousness so a lot of times starhawk was running around doing starhawk stuff he was this he was Eventually joined the original Guardians of the Galaxy, like the Charlie 27 guys. He was on that team. Ving Rames. And Alita was kind of most of the time off in uh, uh, limbo. And then they eventually, you know, fell for each other and whatever. The whole thing is if you're going to have Sylvester Stallone and Ving Rames in the movie, in the MCU as these guys, like, it can't just be this, right? They got to be doing well, something. You never, like Andy said, you never know. I mean, it could be like, a Michelle Pfeiffer type thing, right? She what? was oh here, and then all of a sudden now she's like boom, you know. So you never know. She's what? Yeah, I have, I have a feeling they're uh, these guys are going to show up again in part three, uh, even if it's just cameo roles. But I want them. To, I want it to be a new MCU show on Disney Plus, The Ravagers. You should pitch it to Kevin. Call him up. I'm sure somebody already has. Call up Cheeto. Tell him like. Cheeto. I was like, call your close personal friend Yo, Don Cheeto. Cheats. Yo, Don Cheeks. Hmm. Don Cheeks. I'm sure he can get this done for you. Are, are the you Cheats. not calling him Cheeks? The cheat cheats. The cheatinator. Oh, that worries me just a little bit. Am I not cheatily enough for your Cheeto club? Cheatily, 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 Cheeto. Cheeto. Don Cheeto. Oh, he cheetles it. Oh, no, <laughs> cheetle it up on the cheetle talk. Why did you join it? Because, like I said, this is my kind of silly. Uh, is this movie? <laughs> you're encouraging these two nut jobs to keep yeah. going? Whoa, 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 whoa. Anyway, Starhawk or uh, Stakar uh, basically tells Yandu off, and Yandu's <laughs> pissed about it, but he's secretly a little guilty about it. Yeah, but he he could have explained. Hey, he was, I didn't. I only took him because so and so was going to kill him and all that. But he never, he never did. He, he didn't know, and, and Stone was like, "You didn't know because you didn't want to know because it made you rich." Uh, yeah. he, he tried to say he didn't know, and Stone and uh, Stakar was like, "No, fuck it, you knew." He looked the other way. So it's not until uh, Yandu grows up at the end of the movie that finally gets it he realizes he kept him because he was he didn't want him to get killed because he says yeah. I, I didn't i didn't want you to get killed like those other people he could have just said that to yeah. Sylvester Stallone. Uh, yeah but our our dudes the whole point was ravages yeah. known to be great emotional communicators yeah, no true, right? and he said you know Stallone does a pretty good job but he was also like uh, there but, were all but, the other kids that did die that's those, true that was your fault Yando did that yeah. too. Yeah, Yando was trafficking all of them, so it wasn't just Peter. It was just yeah, that's right. 
All right. Well, uh, and then we see Taser Face starting to plant the seeds of mutiny because he's Taser like, Face created in, in 1990 by in Guardians of the Galaxy number one. Really? By, yeah, by uh, Jim Valentino, who created a lot of these Guardians characters or uh, really or relaunched them all in 1990 because they hadn't been anywhere for a decade and then they jim valentino relaunched them and apparently uh the the story is that his five-year-old son aaron came up with the name taser face <laughs> and he thought it was there it's it's pretty lame but it's also not any more lame than you know clay face or two face or some of the other comic book character names so he put in taser face and uh uh he had a, a little story and wound up getting beat by Wonder Man. Although Wonder oh, Man yeah. was actually a Guardian of the Galaxy at some point in, on this original team. Wonder Man. Hey, well, that's Wonder. that's hilarious. Wonder. That that the the kid that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, that's great. Taser face, and they make fun <laughs> of it throughout the movie. Yeah, and he even gets like they even laugh at him right before he dies. They're laughing at him and tell him Taser face. So, you know, told you. <laughs> Ooh, what? It's, like, it's, it's metaphorical, you see. And then here on Contraxia, Aisha appears with the as her her servants are rolling out the blue carpet mm-hmm. that gets kind of stuck. <laughs> uh, and I just love th- just throughout this movie the way they use music is so cool. Uh, but like just even this that the regal music and then it gets the carpet gets stuck and the music stops yeah. and they finally fix it and the music comes back on like i don't know the the wham bam thank you man when the the gold people show up the sovereign show up like you know and they're we think that if you when they do come back again it's that music starts up again it's just really well done the whole soundtrack and the mm. way they use the the cool music is just really yeah cool. yeah the, the soundtrack it's really strong and really helped the first one land and and having a a great earth soundtrack is great for making this weird space shit uh, more relatable, I guess. Yeah. Just like cool seventies stuff. It's mm-hmm. awesome. Yeah. And then uh, Aisha hires Yondu and his crew to recapture the guardians. Uh, and. Uh, and that, and then we see ego explains to Yondu that, uh, or explains to Quill that Yandu is supposed to deliver Quill, and and I'll tell you more about this on my home planet. Come back to my and I'll explain your heritage or whatever. And then they decide uh, they're going to go with them. And then Mantis and Drax begin interacting uh, with the pet. Pet the puppy. Can I pet your puppy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the pra- ah, that's a practical joke. He almost bites him. Yeah, Mantis is a an, an odd character. Yeah. <laughs> She's got a weird, messed up history. Odd is an understatement, though. Yeah, yeah, I mean, not even in the movie. Like in comics, her history is busted. Mm. Like she first showed up in like 1973 in, in Avengers. She was an Avenger number 112. Uh, Steve Englehart and Don Heck created her, and like the whole her whole thing. And I'm wondering if they'll they'll tap into any of this for uh guardians three or or hinted something um she was like the daughter of libra who is like this there's a anti-shield group called the zodiac they're all based on zodiac signs and shit but she was uh suspected to be the uh the celestial madonna Mm. and when that means she was destined to mate with the eldest kotati who is this race of telepathic plants who are not Groots. They're different plant people. And All it, the plant people. Yeah, and uh, there was this Avenger that she was in love with called the Swordsman who died. And this Kotati plant per- thing sort of possessed the corpse of the Swordsman in order to mate with Mantis and create and give birth to this uh, person named Sequoia who was supposed to be the celestial messiah, I guess, and bring peace to the galaxy or whatever. But it turned out they followed up on that in 2020 with a story called Empire, where Sequoia decides to, he needs to eliminate all animal life, which includes, you know, humanoid, humanity people. And she wasn't a guardian of the galaxy until like 2007's Annihilation Conquest storyline, where they all fought an evil space Ultron. But, you know, Mantis's whole... Like there's a backstory of like you know she's half Vietnamese and half German, 
and like she reached adulthood and then had her memory wipe and wound up as a sex worker and then had to sort of re remember things. There's some messed up shit with Mantis. So um, this is probably the nicer version of uh, a messed up childhood. Yeah. Oh, and, the, and it's the, the, the social interactions, you know, her learning her, how to socially interact from Drax. Is yeah. Kind of a funny little bad thing. news. Yeah, yeah. The worst person to do that. And they're little, <laughs> they're, they're, they have funny bits throughout the thing. And it's kind of funny seeing their friendship kind of form where he's like, you're ugly. Oh, I'm ugly. Oh, but that's good. <laughs> you know, and all that stuff. Uh, and the little joke about petting your, petting your puppy. He's so cute. Uh, I want to die. He's so cute. <laughs> uh, and he's a little puppy. Here we call him. They call him a fox. They call him a little him a, crabby puppy. A little crabby puppy. Yeah. It's just kind of funny. Um, and then Gamora, you know, Quill's not sure he wants to go with Ego or that he trusts him. And she reassures him with the story of Zardu Hasselfrau, you know, who owned the magic boat. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, David Hasselhoff? Uh, it's like, this man is your Hasselhoff. Uh, and so they decide that Quill, Gamora, and Drax are going to go to his home planet and Drax has to take all of his luggage because he doesn't want Groot playing in his luggage. Uh, so he takes it with him. And then Rocket, like why does he even have luggage? He he's shirtless all the time. He just has pants. Yeah, what's pants what is and he, knives? So what's what is there? what's his luggage? Well, uh, that's the Rocket, point. He doesn't want you to know, therefore he must take it. You just don't know. <laughs> and then Rocket and Groot are going to stay back and repair the ship and guard Nebula. And she says before he leaves, go ahead and kill her if you if she's makes a false move or if you just want to. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking this might be a good place to stop and then we'll pick it up when we're all not as tired uh, on the next episode. All right. Oh, nerd Sounds good to me. Sounds like a natural stop. Yeah. And then we'll get to Ego's Planet and we'll get to all the things that ensue. Fighting battles and things like that. Yep. Uh, Family drama. Absolutely. And uh, yeah. And some making some messed up shit. Yeah, like, some fun, like cool shenanigans. Nerd yeah. turds. Just say nerd turds. Nerd turds. Nerd That's turds. Not. No, all right. I'm gonna be on TBJ side with this one. We cannot have nerd turds be our <laughs> sign off. <laughs> well, not. I mean, I'm on board with having TBJ say Excelsior at some point, but she's still not saying it. But I feel <laughs> like we come up with enough crazy stuff at some point. She will just be like Excelsior, guys. All right, here's what here's what you do. Here's the thing, uh, lovely people. I am a Taurus. I want you to look up how often Tauruses change their minds or been willingly. Just just Google that real quick, and you'll know uh, the answer is never. All right, it'll, it'll, it'll happen. Never. It'll happen. I do have an idea for that though, Art. You can come up like we could have some regular bits on the Nerd School periodically. Like uh, I, I've. I got my dumb nerd history shit, but you could have arts nerd turds and then come up with the <laughs> the worst take on anything you could, mm -hmm. or perhaps the dumbest observation that you can possibly think of and say, this has been another art star nerd turd. That's <laughs> probably the only way I would allow it to exist. Or maybe that's uh, the re the new name of the Easter chicken. The nerd uh, turd. Is the nerd turd. Yeah, yeah. You can have a both. You can I have found both. a little can nugget of a nerd turd, turd here. Uh, yeah, this is a, well. Nah, I don't. Uh, I, I, would, I would. I would. I wouldn't compare nerd turd to an Easter chick. Yeah, I think nerd <laughs> turd has to be its own thing because it rhymes. So that's that's when you come out and say, "All right, here's the thing. I think uh, uh, Liv Tyler is horrible, and that's like a, that's your arch star nerd turd. Because or what yeah. if it's a little." homage like little homages we find to be to day. be to be far to be far, far. Oh, i don't gosh. think live tight live tight live tyler is terrible her voice just she isn't me. terrible isn't, no. but that's why it's an art star nerd turd is because it's his opinion that is almost objectively True. wrong 
Okay. But, uh, I'll drop yeah. a big old art star nerd turd right here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's that's the when you're about to stir the pot. You have to drop a turd in it and then drop stir the pot in. so it gets mixed up. You get the nerds We're all never angry. getting rid of this term. <laughs> <laughs> well, it rhymes. It's too catchy. <laughs> We can't we can't just throw out intellectual property like that. We got to trademark here's the thing. that shit. We could. Uh, we can Does, make great choices or we can keep going. <laughs> Does anyone have a copyright on Nerd Turd? Get your lawyers <laughs> on it. ASAP. Yeah, we yeah. can sell t-shirts. Art Stars Nerd Turds. I will not stand behind said t-shirts. Nerd there is a company that sells dog poop scoopers called Turd Nerds. See? <laughs> <laughs> They probably sue us because it's too close of a name. That could be. Well, thanks for listening, nerd turds. Uh, <laughs> no. How about this? Nerd turds are our listeners who refuse to rate, review, and subscribe. No. No, they're, if they're still they're, listening, we cannot call them turds. We don't want to alienate them because they're like, oh, so I'm a nerd turd. Well, they, they might embrace subscribe. They might embrace the term. I won't give you no, five stars, so I'm a nerd that. turd. You can say they're they're on their way to being nerd turds if they don't like <laughs> and subscribe. I just thought <laughs> of this thing. I, all right. Well, thanks for listening, everybody. I'll be like, I'll tell no, you, you next time. I'll tell you guys. I just thought of I thought of TBJ because I'm rewatching Community because mm-hmm. uh, there's going to make a movie. And in season one, I don't know if you guys remember the Halloween episode, but uh, Shirley is dressed as Harry Potter. <laughs> everybody keeps just calling her Urkel. <laughs> okay, Urkel. Oh. Like, I'm Harry Potter. Like, yeah, whatever, Urkel. They like, just walk somewhere else. Like, oh, hey, hold my drink, Urkel. And I just thought, like, how mad TBJ would be because she loves Harry Potter also and would have, like, the I, robe or whatever. And yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't have known who Harry Potter was if it wasn't for TBJ being so into it. And I would have probably assumed it's Urkel, too. So yeah. you've not thought it really Harry Potter yet? And I would have thrown th- hands at a party if people kept calling me Urkel. <laughs> no, wouldn't you be so pissed? You'd be so pissed. I would be. But she doesn't I have think... TBJ's uh, personality, so she just goes, Ooh, you know. If it was TBJ, I was like, and I was picturing that. I was like, if that was TBJ, that person's face would be on the ground. Shirley has TBJ's uh, parts of TBJ's personality, but it's she buried does. under layers. It just yes. comes out every once in a while. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. she does. Well, I think it's so funny because one of my new you know, I to listeners to start a new job. Um, and one of my coworkers was like, Oh my god, I saw a shirt the other day and it's very much you, and it's like the National Society of Sarcasm, which <laughs> is valid. But yeah. I also find it humorous because there's a misconception that people think I'm like sugary sweet, and it's it's my dress style <laughs> because I wear a lot of dresses because the way you with dress. fun yeah, pa- yeah. yeah, yeah. I wear a lot of dresses with fun patterns and it's pretty quirky and people think that equates like sweet and i'm not yeah yeah and i've never claimed <laughs> yeah. but i've never claimed to be and so sometimes when people are around me like what i went i went on a cruise with my sister and her friends for her birthday and i made one of her friends really mad and all i was doing was just it was just sarcasm i wasn't being pointedly mean but she was <laughs> not used to me as a human yeah. um she just had a lot of assumptions about who i was the way I'm you dress kind, yeah. No, I'm a kind human, but I'm not <laughs> nice per se. <laughs> um, when now, when I say that, it's a problem. No, because you're flat out evil. I'm kind. <laughs> I see, want the world to be a why, better place. That's why I believe in the light. No, I believe in the light of the world. I will not choose evil, but I will not fake a niceness that doesn't exist within my soul, which makes me the most real because I stand in the light with honest intentions. <laughs> Boom. I like so that. never on the dark side, but I do have a mouth and it is, um, it's unfortunate or is it? Hmm. So you're like Stratos. And he meant no. I'm just, I don't know what he's gonna... No, I see what people may term sassy. Sassy. sassy I wouldn't term it sassy. I just think it's interesting oh, yeah. that people have a misconception. Of, and there are other things that people have said to me. It's like the glasses <laughs> and the quirky dresses. And someone said to me, uh, "I have tattoos, and one of them tattoos. is in an interesting location." And someone saw it. And said, oh, my God, to me, I thought you were really conservative. And I was like, wow, who, <laughs> who, who told you that? Like, where, are, where in this world would you have gathered pieces of Tiffany and thought, 
I bet you, Tiffany, listen, yeah. I do love Jesus. He is my homie. But if you've met me before, there's no holier than thou-ness. And that, that's where Shirley differs. Uh, yeah. It's really Bennett. And one of my favorite Shirley lines, you, you just mentioned the word, uh, like there's someone trying to describe her. And uh, then she sort of turns the camera for some reason and says, the word he's looking for is sassy. And he better not find it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, I can call myself sassy. You don't. Yeah. You do not. Yeah. You uh, yes. That is 100% it. It is a lot of sass. Um, it's a lot. Of, I try. I try and stay silent. But then people are like, oh my God, why are you so quiet? Because you. I fucking hate that. It's safer. Yeah. I fucking hate oh, that. Or everyone thinks you don't speak ever. He's like, right. I fucking hate people that. People come shit. to me all the time and like, how are you going to have no speak? He speaks all the time. I've never not had a problem. Though. He <laughs> the, never the, the problem is, The problem is they want me to like, like, I think so, I think subconsciously it's like a jealousy thing too. Like they'll sit there and be like, okay, he's talking to her. He's talking to him. How come he not talking to me kind of thing? And it's, it's not even that. It's just like my thing is like, unless we actively engage each other in conversation i'm not just gonna walk up to you and just start rambling on about some shit because i don't true. fuck with people like that you know that's true <laughs> yeah i always find it entertaining when we are in somewhere and someone's like oh, how do you he doesn't talk that much i'm like he talks all the time <laughs> but even before we podcast you've always spoken to me yeah. so i've never thought you don't speak Mm-hmm. And then, they get, then they're surprised when I'm talking to them, like, who the fuck is this guy? Like, like, hey, listen, listen. But I think the all talking the, to you, me a bullshit, motherfucker. <laughs> but I do think w- what people don't gather about you is that mm-hmm. there is, and what I like, if we are working in the same space, we can talk for a bit and then I'll go read and you'll go do what you're doing. Like we can yeah, some people just yeah, like it's a, some and like again, I can I can fucking ramble. I can fucking ramble. Yes, but it's only we know. When, we, yes. when, we know. I, when I feel like it, it's like it's like I, like I get bored. Like I get bored quick. So like we can be sitting there talking, 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 talking. <laughs> but if I'm done with it, it's like okay, I maybe maybe I should just shut up because if I stop talking, this person won't talk to me and they'll walk off because. Like, but okay, I feel like they nothing. feel some type of way when you stop talking, and I'm just like, okay, we're done. That's I'm it. gonna go read my book now. <laughs> We're adults. If you see me doing something else, like I've stopped what I'm doing to converse with you. Okay. You've taken me yeah. away from life. Go back. Like, should you be doing some other stuff? Shouldn't you be working too? Like, why are you here in my face? That's okay. You'll, you'll keep making them jealous. Yes. Right. Keep making them and, jealous. And you know what? <laughs> Who fucking cares? <laughs> <laughs> and with that, we Our say goodnight. Oh, oh, Good night, ago. everybody. Thanks for listening. Andy's an idiot. <laughs> <laughs>